So hello and welcome to the 2023 Julius Best Sao Paulo e Prix pre-race press conference where we're joined on stage by our team representatives. Uh, first of all, just a quick note that we will be doing this press conference and the driver's conference afterwards in English, but there are translators on hand if you'd like anything translated afterwards or if you'd like to ask a question in Portuguese to anyone on the stage at the end of the press conference. Uh, so joining us, we had Florian Brodlinger from Tag Heuer Porsche Formula E team, Tommaso Volpe from the Nissan Formula E team, and Silvan Felipe from Envision Racing. Welcome, yeah. gentlemen. Uh, starting with you, Florian. Now, we've just over, or we're just coming up to the, the a third through the season, and your team are more than 40 points clear uh, off the top of the standings. Now, did you expect this kind of lead and, and the, sh the showing of consistency and performance at the start of the season? Yeah, expectations. Uh, what are the expectations if you develop a new car? We are in, in Gen 3 now, and we have to say we had an amazing season start, but only five races are done. And I think the consistency, as you said, is, is key, because when you see we uh, scored every race valuable points, we had on uh, each race one guy of us on the podium, and we had now three victories uh, in the first five races. Uh, but when you develop a new car, you only know after the first qualifying where you are finally standing regarding performance. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we worked hard and what we achieved until now, we can be proud. Everybody at home in the factory, but also in the, within the team can be proud for this achievement. But it's a season start and we have to keep working hard. Um, yeah, the season will be long, 11 more to go. Absolutely. Now, Antonio said this week that although Pascal has been putting in the very strong performances, the, the gap was actually much smaller there than he expected between the two of them. So do you think that following his now back-to-back -back very impressive performances at the podium and the win in India and Cape Town, that will see perhaps more competition between the two drivers at the front and even potentially a Porsche double podium? When you speak about a double podium, for sure that's a, a dream and uh, it would be great to see both of them on the joining one podium. Um, we saw a quite different uh, start into the season in Mexico, uh, both were in the top seven. And then Pascal had a fantastic weekend in Diria with the two wins. And then Antonio started to get his podium in India and a fantastic win with amazing overtakes in, in, in Cape Town. So both showed that they can win, they are good for the podium and we have to work hard to give them the car uh, that they both can extract the performance uh, out of it and then I'm really looking forward to have both up there. Yeah. So just looking back briefly at, at Cape Town um, with a very tough race for Pascal, how do you think he's looking to respond this weekend on another new circuit and get back to those winning ways because this circuit seems to be one that might heavily suit your efficiency. Yeah, coming back to Cape Town uh, was a tough result, uh, clear, but uh, he will focus, he will come back uh, stronger, and that's the clear target for this race here, to show what he's capable to do, what our team is capable to do, and what the car can do. Uh, but this track is quite different uh, to all other, what we've seen this season so far, a lot of stop and go, low speed, and we need to see where we are in performance uh, after free practice and then in qualifying, but clearly the target is again, to fight for top positions and to fight for the podium and maybe a victory, let's see. Okay, moving on to Tommaso. Now, it seems that after a tough few races, the team is now beginning to pull together and, and there's some promising performancing, uh, performances that have been seen. Do you think there's now opportunity to keep extracting more potential from the car? And I guess, would you consider yourself prior to this being a bit of an underdog in the championship, but now being there able to battle with those further up the field? Well, if you see the ranking at the moment, we are still an underdog. <laughs> but we know definitely, as you said, that in the last two races we found a better place. As a, the way we, we understand the car, the team operations have improved a lot. And so our improvement so far has been very steep when compared to the beginning of the season. So I think we are much more credible now. And to be honest, if we hadn't had bad luck, I, I don't like using the word luck in motorsport because things happen to everyone. and. Overall, you need to see the whole season, but I must say, in the last two races, we really had bad luck, so without that, I think we would have seen that uh, the team, as you say, is not an underdog anymore. But, uh, but we also know that we have many areas where we can improve still, 
and uh, we knew that season nine for us was a season after two very tough years, a season where we had to rebuild the team, and uh, we are doing it very well. And I'm positively surprised to see that we are credible already from from India anyway. So. So you mentioned there about rebuilding the team in between seasons, and, and now I was looking at the driver pairing that you selected with Norman and Sasha, both new full-time drivers. Uh, how has the experience been going so far working with them both? Well, very good. Uh, they have improved themselves as well, compared to when we were in Valencia. And uh, uh, I would say, yeah, it's another team. <laughs> and I can see also other drivers compared to when we were in Valencia, to be honest. And of course, we wanted to have a rookie driver because for us, uh, with the purchase of the team, Generation 3 was a new era for Nissan. So this is the first time we had a full control of the race operations and not just car development. So we wanted to reflect this also to a brand new driver lineup with a rookie driver to invest on, a young talent and an experienced one. So they interpret their roles very well in this respect and they fit very well with the two different profiles that we were looking for, so, so it's good. So with Sasha's fastest FE lap time in, in uh, fastest in FE history, uh, in fact, in Cape Town, does this give you confidence that there could be even more to be extracted from the car going forward? Well, you always have more to extract from the car, of course, especially if we start again the development. <laughs> and uh, so yes, for sure there is more to extract from the car, but this is the same for everyone. And there is more to extract from the drivers' cap capabilities, from the team operations, and from the car. But I think, in this respect, we are not in a different position compared to the other competitors. So, okay. okay. And finally, moving on to Silvan. Um, your driver is currently sitting fifth and sixth in the, in the championship, split just by two points. So the season, fair to say, has started pretty well for you and the team, and the consistency that you've shown has been very impressive. So do you feel as if you're in a good place or where you should be at this point? Yeah, it was a good, uh, good start of the season. Uh, you know, pre-season pre testing for all of us was, was quite challenging, um, but we recovered quickly. So it's looking okay. I mean, my uh, colleague on the right-hand side is uh, clearly as a target on his back. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, we are very... Um, very proud partners of Jaguar. They have done a really good, uh, a really good job on the power train and the technology. But as always, it's only one part of the story. Um, it's you know, drivers, team operation, and, and everything else that needs to come together. Um, I think what is really exciting is that Formula is as competitive as ever. I don't think any of us really expected that, especially at the beginning of a new Gen 3 cycle, we didn't expect that the times would be so close together from straight from the beginning. So it, it's quite interesting. I think it's good for the sport. But it also makes our job together very challenging because we have to really find the limits everywhere to be, to be competitive. So yeah, good start, but it's a long, long season ahead. Many points, many things can happen. Um, the car is a um, car is complex, really interesting in terms of technology, but also complex. So yeah, I think it's only the beginning. There's going to be uh, many more plot stories coming up. So all three of you on the stage have a, a, a customer and a uh, manufacturer relationship of some sort, but for, for you, Silvan, with the relationship with Jaguar, for the most part, Envision have been the better of the Jaguar-powered cars so far this season. So how is that relationship developing? Is it still very collaborative, or is there a little bit of competition creeping in now? I think we're all within the sport well enough to know that, especially at the beginning of the season, luck and you know, racing incidents have a big part of it, right? So. If you look at all the lap times, our Jaguar friends are exactly the same as us in terms of performance. So it's a question of putting the race together. And you know, many things that happen as we do in the last few races that have an impact on this. So a few different situations and Jaguar could be just behind Porsche as easily. Um, so I've been in this sport long enough to know that the standings one third into the championship don't mean that much. A few years ago, my team was leading the championship for the whole championship and we lost it to the last race. Mm. So we know how it works. But the main thing is to keep working together really well, which we are. And you know, the competition is fierce, you know, from my two colleagues next to me. And so we just have to be very competitive every race and then put the weekend together and you know, it's a the consistency all over there. And finally, after what was a very a super fast track in Cape Town, let's be honest, the Sao Paulo circuit looks to be maybe the fur fastest in terms of top speed at least. So what's your impression of the circuit, first of all, and what will be required from, from you as a team to balance the speed, but also the cornering and the energy management side of things? 
Yeah, uh, first, I think it's really exciting to see the, the Formula E and Gen 3 cars going so fast in excess of 260 kph at several circuits. I mean, a few years ago, we would have dreamt of that. <laughs> exciting to see, I personally love to see our cars going really, really fast. That's what it's all about. So we like that. Here, for sure, very different challenge to, to get down. And it's all about, a lot of it is about the braking. And you know, if you're going to go from close to 270 kph to not much, um, and turn on and feel the corner. So it's all about grip and braking and, and car balance and visual, really. Um, but it's a challenge that, you know, a few years ago in Formula we, we never had because we never went that fast. So for the drivers, I think it, it's exciting. I think they like the speed. And hopefully for the fans and for the show, it's, it's really great. Like the car hopefully will, will do very fast because it is, so it should be really good. And, and the, the difficulty in balancing that with the energy management requirements as well, what sort of race are we likely to see? Yeah, so it's always average out, right? Like you, have, you go really fast and you use a lot of energy on the straight, but then also you have, you have slow corners, so it's average out. So it's a similar approach to, to the way we normally do it. But of course, also here it's hot as well, hot and humid, so that's another dimension. So yeah, plenty of challenges for our you know, engineering teams to, to work on day and night. So yeah, it should be, it should be really exciting. Now we do have time for a few minutes for questions from the floor.